When we create a new core data entity, Xcode automatically generates a managed object class for us when we build our code. We can then use that in a Swift UI fetch request to show data in our user interface. But as you've seen, it's quite painful. There are lots of optionals to unwrap. So you have to scatter nil coalescing around in order to make your code work. There are two solutions to this. A fast and easy one that can sometimes end up being problematic or a slightly slower solution that works better in the long term. First, let's create an entity to work with. Open your data model and create an entity called movie with the attributes title, a string, director, a string, and year, and integer 16. Before you leave the data model editor, I'd like you to go to the view menu and choose inspectors, show data model inspector, which brings up a pane on the right of Xcode containing more information about whatever you've selected right now. When you select movie, you'll see a variety of data model options for that entity. But there's one in particular I'd like you to look at, code gen. This controls how Xcode generates the entity as a managed object class when we build our project. And by default, it'll be class definition. I'd like you to change that to manual slash none which gives us full control over how the class is made. Now that Xcode is no longer making a movie class for us to use in code, we can't use it in code unless we actually make the class with some real Swift code. To do that, go to the editor menu and choose create NS managed object subclass. Then make sure movie selected and press next again. You'll be asked where Xcode should save its code. So please make sure you choose core data project with a yellow folder icon on its left and select the Core Data Project folder too. When you're ready, press Create to finish the process. What we just did was ask Xcode to convert its generated code into actual Swift files that we can see and change. Although, keep in mind if you change the files Xcode made for us, then regenerate those files, your changes will be lost. Xcode will have made two files for us, but we only care about one of them, movie plus core data properties dot Swift. Inside there, you'll see these three lines of code. In that tiny slice, you can see three things. First, this is where our optional problem stems from. Second, year is not optional, which means core data will assume a default value for us. And third, it uses at nsmanaged on all three properties. Now, nsmanaged is not a property wrapper. This is much older than property wrappers in Swift UI. Instead, this reveals a little of how core data works internally. Rather than those values actually existing as properties in the class, they're really just there to read and write from a dictionary that core data uses to store its information. When we read or write the value of a property that's NS managed, core data catches that and handles it internally. It's far from a simple Swift string. Now you might look at the code and think, I don't want optionals in there, and change it to this. And you know what? That'll absolutely work. You can make movie objects with just the same code as before. Use fetch requests to query them, save their managed object contexts, and more, all with no problems. However, you might notice something strange. Even though our properties aren't optional anymore, it's still possible to create an instance of the movie class without providing those values. And this ought to be impossible. Those properties aren't optional, which means they must have values all the time, and yet we can create them without values. What's happening here is a little of that NS managed magic leaking out. Remember, these aren't real properties. And as a result, NS managed is letting us do things that ought not to work. The fact that it does work is neat. And for small core data projects and or learning, I think removing the optionality is a great idea. However, there's a deeper problem. Core data is lazy. And do you remember Swift's lazy keyword and how it lets us delay work until we actually need it? Well, core data does much the same thing, except with data. Sometimes it looks like some data has been loaded when it really hasn't been because core data is trying to minimize its memory impact. Core data calls these faults in the sense of a fault line, a line between where something exists and where something's just a placeholder. We don't have to do any special work to handle these faults because as soon as we try to read them, core data transparently fetches the real data and sends it back. Another benefit of NS managed. 
However, when we start futzing with the types of core data's properties, we risk exposing its peculiar underbelly. This thing specifically does not work the way Swift expects, and if we try to circumvent that, then we're pretty much inviting problems. Values you said definitely won't be nil might suddenly be nil at any point. Instead, you might want to consider adding computed properties that help us access the optional values safely, while also letting us store the nil coalescing code all in one place. For example, we could add a property of movie to ensure we always have a valid title, like this. Public var, wrap title, string, return title, or failing that, unknown title. This way, the whole rest of your code doesn't have to worry about core data's optionality. And if you want to make changes to default values, you can do it in a single file. 